there, Eddie Collins once again. Today let's focus on how to get the best tone out of your right hand picking. There are two main elements involved in creating the best tone that you can get from your instrument. The first being where you position your right hand in relationship to the bridge. The closer you are to the bridge, the brighter the tone. Move up toward the neck and you get a mellower tone. So many players try to locate the sweet spot on their banjo that gives them the brightest tone that really cuts through, and that will usually be not right next to the bridge, a little too bright, but just about, a, about an inch in. In this position, your leads will be bright enough to still cut through, but not be so piercing. As your left hand comes up the neck, your right hand will usually come up to meet it somewhat to help mellow out those notes. You don't want to do it back here. Perhaps a little bit too shrill. So Bill Keith referred to this as the accordion effect. You're playing down here. It's fine to be down near the bridge. As you move up. Sounds a little better to get a little mellower tone. So there's an entire palette of colors that you can get out of your banjo if you're willing to seek and find them. A good banjo player should have a banjo head that looks something like that, where their hand is constantly moving to different positions to get the full range of dynamics available from the instrument. The second element in creating good tone is the point of attack at which your fingers cross the strings. Does the blade of the pick strike the string flush, or does it hit against the side of the pick, making a somewhat thin slicing sound? Beginners often struggle using finger picks, and so they ask, do they need to learn to play with finger picks? The answer, of course, is no. But the tone won't really cut through when you go to play with other pickers. So learning to put on the picks will help you both cut through and get the volume that you need. Most players will use metal finger picks, usually a plastic thumb pick. The metal thumb picks, in my opinion, put a scrapey sound on the fifth string. Uh, but many players like them, so that's a personal preference. The metal picks, different than plastic, will give you that bright metallic tone that you need. You have a lot of choices when it comes to the thickness of the finger picks you choose to use. This one's a .013, the thinnest one they make. Sounds pretty good. Very pliable, feels comfortable on your fingers. Most pros are using a .025, almost twice as thick. The extra metal tends to give you a fuller sound, a louder sound. I was hitting the string with the same force. Just get a brighter pick attack. They do make picks out of other materials. Those were made out of nickel. This one is made out of brass. You can see the darker color and that is very comfortable on your fingers. Again, a softer tone, great for practice and in some playing situations. Another element that's going to affect your tone is how you wear the picks on your fingers. If you wear them like Earl Scruggs, that pick is gonna wrap up and around the tip of your finger. Other players, such as John Hickman, chose to bend the blade of the pick out pretty flat, wrap the bands around the end of their finger, and then they would have the pick sticking out like this. For each his own, so try it and see which works best for you. The key thing for me is that the full blade of the pick strikes the string flush. Part of developing the ability to do this involves the angle of the neck. 
If the neck comes down and I keep my pick the same, all of a sudden I'm striking against the side of the pick. Bring the neck back up and you get your brighter tone. For most, you'll be getting your fullest tone with your neck angle at about 2 o'clock. Should you choose to use a lower neck angle, you'll need to compensate by raising your wrist on your armrest here. I call this tightening the jar lid. You'll find that you have to turn your hand a little bit to the right to get that good tone once again. This actually was a hand position similar to what J.D. Crow used in the 1970s where he had his wrist turned like this. Notice that it puts your thumb pick way ahead of your fingers. The thumb being more powerful, it can kind of make up for the further distance from the bridge. Uh, other players like Alan Monday choose to get all their fingers lined up in a row. So again, the wrist will be a little further down. At that point, they're usually compensating by bending their picks in a certain way to make sure they come flush with the strings. Many players use picks as they come from the manufacturer, which includes having this bevel rounded edge right on the tip of the finger pick. I prefer to have a flat edge, and so I take a standard pick and use some pliers to flatten out that edge. I feel this gives me more contact on the string. Also, many players bend their pick slightly to the side. This helps when you're, you're doing your arch or lack of thereof in the right hand, getting the pick to come straight across the string. And so that's how my picks look. A manufacturer, Pro Pick, was aware that people like to bend their picks at that angle and actually make a pick can see the A and G on there, which stands for an angled pick. The blade is angled a little bit. So take some time shaping your pick, experimenting with your pick angle down here, the angle of the neck. Put it all together to get the tone that you desire from your banjo.